last year saw the release of Pac-Man, but good god, 1981 is crazy compared to any year we've covered so far. Five big games are released this year, and some other not-so-hit games are released as well. In February 1981, Williams Electronics released Defender. In Defender, the player was tasked with protecting astronauts and killing waves of aliens. Williams Electronics hasn't been mentioned yet. They were founded in 1974 as Williams Electronics. However, they go back to the early 1940s when they were created as Williams Manufacturing Company by Harry Williams. Defender is generally considered to be one of the most important video games of the golden age of arcade games, being up there with Space Invaders, Asteroids, and Pac-Man. Williams Electronics, specifically Eugene Jarvis, Larry DeMar, Paul DeSalt, and Sam Dicker first started developing a color version of Space Invaders. After they gave up on that idea, they tried making a version of Asteroids. The problem was, they wanted to use pixel graphics, while Asteroids used vector graphics. After scrapping both ideas, they spent some time trying to come up with new ideas. They decided that the game's world should be bigger than what the screen can display. They also came up with the idea to have the game scroll horizontally. Jarvis wanted to have some violence in the game, as that's what he enjoyed. To that end, he named the game Defender, based on the show The Defenders from the 1960s. The game wasn't an instant hit, meaning it was relatively slow to gain popularity. However, within six months of Defender's release, it was one of the most profitable games in the United States. The game would go on to sell over 55,000 units worldwide. We're really picking up steam now. On July 9th, 1981, Nintendo released Donkey Kong in Japan. It would be released on July 31st, 1981 in North America. Donkey Kong introduced perhaps two of the most well-known video game characters ever made, Mario and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpai Yokai. They had a budget of approximately $100,000 to create a game that would be a success, unlike their previous games like Radar Scope and Sheriff. Miyamoto originally wanted Donkey Kong to use Popeye, Bluto, and Olive Oil. That didn't work out, so he created Donkey Kong, Mr. Video, and Lady. Lady would later be renamed to Pauline, and Mr. Video would be renamed to Jumpman, and eventually Mario. Mario was originally a carpenter, not a plumber like he is today. He was made a carpenter as a way to logically have him try to save Pauline from Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong took place in a construction site, so it wouldn't make much sense to have some big muscular soldier trying to save Pauline. Mario's job as a carpenter would be short-lived, as he'd be a plumber in 1983's Mario Bros. The plot of Donkey Kong is well known, albeit pretty simple. You take control of Jumpman, with your goal being to try and rescue Pauline from the giant ape Donkey Kong. According to Miyamoto, Beauty and the Beast as well as King Kong were influences on Donkey Kong's creation. Donkey Kong is holding Pauline in a cage at the top of the stage. As Jumpman makes his way to the top, he must climb ladders and avoid barrels being thrown at him by Donkey Kong. The player is three lives at the start of the game and can earn more by accumulating 7,000 points, which are awarded for various actions like jumping over barrels, destroying objects with a hammer, finishing the level, among other things. The game has four unique stages. After beating the fourth stage, you go back to the first stage, which is now more difficult than it was the first time through. After reaching the 22nd level, the game ends due to a glitch in the programming. Donkey Kong was extremely popular in North America, the United States specifically. Nintendo made 2,000 units to start with, and those sold pretty quick. In October 1981, Donkey Kong was selling more than 4,000 units per month. Within the first 11 months of the game's release, more than 60,000 units had been sold. The game was a wild success when ported to home consoles as well. On Coleco's home console alone, Donkey Kong sold more than 6 million units. Donkey Kong would also spark a lawsuit between Nintendo and Universal Studios. The case's official name was Universal City Studios Incorporated v Nintendo Corporation Ltd. The gist of the lawsuit is that Universal felt that Nintendo had violated their trademark on King Kong by releasing Donkey Kong, a game based on a giant ape who has Kong in his name. Judge Robert Sweet ruled in Nintendo's favor. Nintendo would then give John Kirby, the lawyer who represented them, a sailboat named Donkey Kong. While the other games released this year aren't bigger than Donkey Kong, they are still classics. Next up, Galaga. Galaga is a sequel to 1979's Galaxian. Galaga was first released in Japan in September 1981 and December 1981 in North America. From a gameplay perspective, Galaga is very similar to Galaxian. However, some changes were made. You could now fire two shots back to back. Your ship could now be captured by the enemy. Once the enemy has control of your ship, and they try and use your ship to attack you. Destroying the alien ship that your former ship attacks with lets you take back control of your ship, doubling your firepower. Galaga also had a 
a bonus stage that occurs every few stages. In this stage, many enemies will fly on screen in a pattern. They won't shoot at you, and your goal is to try and destroy as many as possible, with 10,000 points being awarded if you successfully destroy them all. Galaga has been called one of the best video games of all time, being a frequent member of the best video game of all time lists by various publications, including IGN, Time, and Electronic Gaming Monthly. Let's take a break from rescuing damsels in distress and shooting aliens. Let's talk about nature, specifically frogs. Frogger was first released on June 5th, 1981 in Japan and on October 23rd, 1981 in North America. At the time, Konami didn't have a way to manufacture games in North America, so they licensed the game to Sega to distribute the game in North America. Frogger was developed by Konami and published by Sega. In Frogger, you guide the frog to one of five homes, which are beyond the street and the river. There are nine different ways that you can die in Frogger. Being hit by a car, falling into water, touching snakes or otters or the alligator's mouths in the river, running out of time, riding an alligator or log off screen, riding a turtle into the liquid abyss, jumping into a home that's occupied by an alligator, and jumping into a home that's occupied by another frog. It's a well-known fact that frogs don't like to share. Frogger was a hit in both Japan and North America, thanks to its pretty unique gameplay. It was also one of the first games to use more than one processor. For the arcade machine, that is. According to a GameSpot article from October 2005, Frogger had sold more than 20 million copies worldwide by 2005. Another Konami game was released in 1981 as well, Scramble. To paraphrase Professor Jim Whitehead, Scramble establishes the convention for horizontal side-scrollers, making it possible to have actual level designs, which permits a kind of landscape narrative where the world and story are uncovered by traversing through the level. As you may have guessed from that, Scramble was the first side-scrolling shooter with forced scrolling. You take control of an aircraft and fly it through the level while avoiding obstacles and picking up fuel, because you will run out of fuel. You also have guns to shoot enemies with. The game was both commercially and critically successful. Successful. Many gaming journalists of the time considered it to be one of the best games of the year. Scramble had a sequel in 1981 called Super Cobra. In Super Cobra, you control a helicopter instead of a jet. Super Cobra has 10 distinct sections, each with their own type of terrain and obstacles. The gameplay is similar, but Super Cobra built on what Scramble had already established. Like Scramble, Super Cobra was praised for its gameplay. By the end of the year, the two games had sold 25,000 units, 15,000 for Scramble and 12,000 for Super Cobra. Think we're done with 1981 yet? Think again. I told you, it was a crazy year. What is perhaps the first game based on World War II was released in 1981, Castle Wolfenstein. Castle Wolfenstein was developed by Muse Software and first released on the Apple II computer. It would later be ported to a wide variety of other computers and home consoles. Wolfenstein is a top-down action-adventure stealth game. The mechanics of the game are relatively basic now, but at the time they were pretty damn crazy. You have options on how you do things. You can shoot the guards to kill them and risk alerting other guards. You can throw grenades at the guards instead. You could point your gun at the guard, making him put his hands up allowing you to take his items. You could find a uniform to just sneak out of the building. There was lots of options. Castle Wolfenstein was one of, if not the first games to use digitized voices. Guards would actually shout stop or come at the player. Seems simple today, but there was a time when every game mechanic was revolutionary. A predecessor to the Commodore 64 was released in 1981 called the Commodore VIC-20. It had a 1.02 MHz processor and 5 kilobytes of RAM. The VIC-20 sold for $299 and was praised for its performance based on that price. One of the advantages of the VIC-20 was that it used cartridge games, instead of games on tape like other computers, meaning you didn't have to wait for the game to load. Once you turned on the computer, it was ready to play. It was also the first computer to sell 1 million units. At its peak, 9,000 computers were being produced per day. The first Ultima game was released in 1981, Ultima 1, the first Age of Darkness, as it's known today, or simply Ultima when it was released. Ultima was an RPG created by Richard Garriott. To quote the Ultima wiki, because I don't know anything about this game, the plot of the first Ultima game is as follows. Quote, the wizard mundane attacks Cesoria with his hordes of evil creatures and foul magic, threatening to crush the world beneath his heel. The player, in the role of the stranger, travels to Cesoria for the very first time to stop Mundane's plans from succeeding. However, Mundane has become immortal thanks to a magic gem and his fortress is unreachable, making the quest seemingly insurmountable." End quote. The player can create their own character at the start of the game and can distribute points into various attributes to suit their playstyle, as well as choosing from one of four different races. 
human, hobbit, bobbit, or elf. Ultima's gameplay is third-person, top-down perspective for the overworld, while the dungeons are in first-person. The game has what you'd expect for a fantasy RPG from the early 80s. There's combat, quests, magic, spells, and all those sorts of things. Upon release, Ultima was praised for the sheer size of the game, as well as its impressive graphics. Lastly, Miss Pac-Man would be released in July 1981. While the core gameplay is the same from Pac-Man to Miss Pac-Man, some changes were made. Among the changes are that levels now have extra warp tunnels, the walls have an outline, the four main mazes appear in different colors, and the fruits will appear randomly in the maze, instead of just being at the center. Miss Pac-Man was originally going to be called Crazy Otto, and was going to be an expansion pack to Pac-Man. A lawsuit stopped that from happening, so instead of doing nothing with their idea, General Computer Corporation, they had come up with the idea for Crazy Otto, showed their idea to Midway, who decided to release the game. The game was as much a hit as the original Pac-Man was. And that takes us to the end of 1981. If you actually made it this far and you didn't believe me at the start of the video when I said it was a crazy year, you should believe me now. So many classic games were released this year. 1982 was a little slower than 1981, but not by much. Thank you for watching this part of the history of video games. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.